Hi, I'm Irene Tansman, the author of Abby and Arlene's Autism War. If you live in Massachusetts and your loved one is served at a day habilitation facility, please consider joining the Day Habilitation Families in Massachusetts Facebook group. Today, I want to talk about community integration for individuals with severe autism or more moderate autism or intellectual dis disabilities with significant behavioral issues. The idea that if someone lives in the community, that he or she will have access to that community is ludicrous. The idea that closing institutions and sheltered workshops will magically provide access to the community just doesn't make any sense. My son attended three different autism specialty schools before age 22. None of them had curricula for community-based instruction. In my view, in order to have access to the community, you need to have somewhat socially accepted behavior in the community. In other words, you cannot destroy property, steal, hit people, expose yourself, or a host of other behaviors that will never be accommodated or accepted in the community. So how can a family make community integration happen for their loved one with severe autism? How does someone with these types of behaviors get access to the community? Right now, the burden of providing opportunities for community access is mostly placed on usually immigrant, untrained staff in adult services who earn about $12 an hour. That's reality. The individuals that these staff work with are not prepared to be in the community. Why? Well, because they haven't had spend, spent that much time in the community and they've never had any community-based instruction. They have never had the instruction and the skills needed to foster adaptive behavior in the community. There are some staff who have a natural gift for teaching and some of these folks can, can actually teach community-based skills, but this is the exception to the rule rather than the, rather than the rule. What must be done to promote community integration for the severe population is intensive work requiring much patience and grit. This should have been worked on during the school years, yet schools routinely get away with not doing this. I would like to say a few words about how we're integrating our son who has severe autism into the community. Not everyone has the situation we have, so what I'm advising won't work for everyone. I would like to hear about how others are doing this as well. I realized a long time ago that no school program, no adult program, no disability recreation program, nobody was going to do, was going to integrate our son into the community for us. The job was just too difficult and nobody really knew how to do this. I still advocate for what my son needs within his programming. If the situation is to improve one day, you just can't stop advocating. So here is my advice to families actively trying to integrate their loved one into the community. Number one, teach the skills necessary for adaptive community-based behavior. It is not enough to treat maladaptive behavior or use positive behavior supports. Without positive teaching of adapt, these adaptive skills, my son made little progress on behavioral difficulties. And not just teaching, you, you don't have to just teach it yourself. You can also advocate for the teaching of these skills in your child's program or adults, your child or adults program. Uh, the behaviorist Patrick McGreevy has identified eight essential skills needed for adaptive behavior. These are called the essential eight, and McGreevy discusses these essential skills in his Essential for Living curriculum. I wrote an article about this curriculum for practice learning. I'm posting a link to that article below. The essential skills include making requests 
waiting, accepting removals, making transitions, sharing, taking turns, completing 10 consecutive brief previously acquired tasks, accepting no, that's a real important one, following directions which pertain to health and safety, completing daily living skills as they relate to health and safety, and tolerating health and safety situations. Number two, find a community-based activity where your loved one can go repeatedly and the routine is basically the same. Recreational programs providing a variety of different activities do not make sense for individuals having problems with community integration. It doesn't make sense for individuals who learn best through routine. Practice targeted essential eight skills within these community-based activities. You have to teach it with it. The community integration has to be taught in the community. Faith-based organizations are ideal for working on community-based integration. While many people attend synagogues, churches, and mosques for spiritual connection, there are also a good number of people who attend these in order to make friendships and other connections in the community. Even if your loved one does not understand the concept of God or spirituality, he or she can be part of a faith-based community. I want to say here that you do need to find the correct community. A community that makes it clear you are not welcome simply won't work even with excellent advocacy. Community-based instruction will be difficult enough without having to swim against the tide. In addition to the essential eight, practice socialization in the community. So this includes the essential eight, and it also includes greeting people properly or any other um, socialization skill that your child can do. Your child can have a conversation, etc. If you're looking for another path to community integration, you might wanna check out the Organization for Autism Researchers YouTube on, tr on transition with Peter Gerhardt. In that video, he discusses community-based instruction within a supermarket. I'll place a link to that YouTube video as well below. I hope that, you, that this video has been helpful to you, and I hope you will consider bu buying my book, Avi and Arlene's Autism War, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching.